Thank you very much, Rob, and uh, congratulations on a terrific race, and that was just the beginning. I know you'll be back. Uh, and it's great to be here with uh, fellow conservatives uh, here in Michigan, and also with my uh, longtime friend, Norm Hughes. Uh, you know, I was kidding him a little earlier. Uh, uh, just about everybody uh, claims to be a Reaganite these days, but uh, uh, Norm was a Reaganite when it wasn't uh, cool or in fashion to be one. He was part of the Reagan Revolution in 76, and we finished the job in terms of electing him in 1980. The book, written uh, is called Bringing America Home, How America Lost Its Way and How We Can Find Our Way Back. And I talked in there about how we squandered the political capital that Goldwater Reagan conservatives uh, took more than three decades uh, to build up. And really what happened in the post-Reagan period of American politics and how we lost our way and how we can find our way back. Because I think one of the strengths of uh, Ronald Reagan, not only was he a man of principle, not only did he bring a terrific group of experienced conservative outsiders uh, with him to Washington, D.C., Terry Davis is here, Norm, myself, many others. Uh, but also, what we did was really uh, lay out a strategy to really uh, bring America back. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and then lay out, if you will, a, a new strategy, a new conservative gener uh, agenda for the future. But you know, it's interesting being in Michigan, there are two things that immediately uh, come to mind. I date myself from starting in the Goldwater Movement and uh, really working as National College Chairman against a new force that emerged in the mid-60s. It was called the New Left. It was led by a, a guy who went to the University of Michigan, not one of Michigan's proudest moments, and that was Tom Hayden of the SDS. And unfortunately, that uh, movement not only changed our culture, but also influenced uh, liberal administrations, including the current administration, uh, down to the present. But let me mention a good side of, uh, of Michigan, and that was the Reagan Democrats. And I think that term, as I'm told, was uh, coined because so many people came uh, behind Ronald Reagan here in Michigan who historically have been Democrats. And you begin to bring those Reagan Democrats home last year. And let's uh, complete the job and get them back as part of a new conservative majority in America next year. You know, as I said, uh, I date myself. I was a young Texan in Washington, D.C. who read a book called The Conscience of a Conservative by Barry Goldwater and the Road to Serfdom by F.A. Hayek and Up for Liberalism by Bill Buckley. And I decided at a young age that I was a conservative. And that was at a time when the Republican Party was dominated by the Rockefeller Republicans and nationally uh, the Democrats and liberalism were the dominant force in American culture and in American politics as well as in terms of our over overall view of economic policy. So I'll be blunt, I thought I was joining the losing side when I signed on to the Goldwater campaign. In fact, I worked in the Goldwater for President campaign in 1964. But I thought it was the right thing to do. And you know, it was a pretty frustrating campaign, running against LBJ after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and we were doing very badly. But uh, there was a 30-minute address by a man named Ronald Reagan. And there was a man who laid out, if you will, a vision for conservatism and a vision for what ultimately became the Reagan majority. So out of that defeat in 1964, and because a tremendous number of people were willing to stand up for principle, we were able to see 16 years later Ronald Reagan come to power and really change the world. And interestingly enough, uh, and unfortunately, uh, we don't have 16 years to wait anymore in light of what's happening today. So we better get it right next year. I think back to Barry Goldwater, and I remember him saying that uh, I want to represent and speak on behalf of the forgotten Americans, the middle class taxpayers and families who don't have lobbyists in Washington and aren't looking for loopholes in the law. He said big government, big labor, and big business, they got plenty of folks looking out for their interests. But we've got to worry about the forgotten Americans, the majority of Americans who just are trying to raise their families 
and really uh, go back to our core principles. And in a way, that's what happened last year. That movement came back, just like it did when Ronald Reagan was elected. And I think, as part of the Reagan transition team, you know, I, I remember being in Washington as power was transferred from Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan. Sometimes we tend to forget how serious the problems were back then. We had double-digit inflation. We had high unemployment, comparable to what we have today. We had an international, we had stagflation, if you will, the combination, if you will, of, of high unemployment plus incredible double-digit inflation. At the same time, on the international front, we were seemingly on the losing side of the Cold War. In fact, the so-called foreign policy expert Henry Kissinger said at the time, we're on the losing side, we better cut the best deal possible with the Soviet Union. So when Ronald Reagan came into office, not only were we facing enormous difficulties on the economic front, but at the same time, we were facing a situation internationally which our hostages had been seized and ran. The Soviets were kicking us around the globe with themselves and their surrogates, and it looked like America's best days were behind us. And as I think back now, to see the enormity of the problem, and to see a man with the vision, with the leadership, standing up for principles, willing to make the hard call, and also a man who brought with him a group of experienced conservative outsiders who were willing to challenge the Washington culture and the political elites. That is what we need so badly today. And I think as I was still on the White House staff, I was on the White House lawn when the President welcomed the hostages back from Iran, and having served in Vietnam, I had really gotten disgusted with Jimmy Carter talking about what he called the post-Vietnam malaise. And Ronald Reagan didn't speak all that long that day. But it, like, it was like a cloud that had been lifted. It was like America was back. And that was the beginning of what was a remarkable eight years in office, particularly the first term. Let me talk a little bit about those issues, because in a way, uh, his understanding, our understanding at the time, is so applicable uh, to today's situation, to applying conservative principles to the problems he faced, and applying conservative principles again today to the problems we face today. And there are different sets of problems, but the point is that by standing for conservative principles and applying them to the problems facing America in 1981, within four years, America was back and it seemed like all was right with this country, and all was right on the international scene as well. But beginning with the issue of unemployment, from day one, Ronald Reagan understood that not only did we need to address the spending side, and a government that had grown out of control, too big, too centralized in Washington, D.C., but we also had to grow the private sector again. Government doesn't create jobs, only the private sector does. He understood that, and we passed in 1981 the Kemp Raw Job Creation Act to get Americans back to work and to start growing the private sector again. And guess what? It worked. America was back by 1983. People were back to work. Unemployment was down, and we had an economic boom well in to the 1990s as a result of what was done at that time in 1981 with a bipartisan approach that was successful in getting Americans back to work and getting the private sector moving again. Secondly, and I don't think the Reagan administration has given enough credit for that, we did have an enormous growth in spending over the LBJ days and into the 70s and quite frankly the Nixon administration, the Ford administration and of course the Carter administration didn't do anything to change that. The people don't realize that we literally cut uh, domestic discretionary spending by nearly 10% in the first Reagan term. Uh, Norm was over at the Department of Energy doing his work. I was heading an agency at the time called the Action Agency, an independent agency, now called AmeriCorps. And in four years, we were able to do more with less and cut the budget by 25%, cut the bureaucracy in half, and yet, at the same time, uh, work with the wonderful programs such as foster grandparents, senior companions, retired senior volunteers, and in the process, I also defunded the Alinsky-style organizations 
who prior to my coming to action were getting about $20 million a year in taxpayer dollars from that little agency in order to undermine our traditional social and economic values. So when people say it can't be done, don't listen to them. It can be done, and we did it. Don't did we, Norm, in the Reagan administration. But let me tell you what's happened. I left in 1985, and that agency, as I said, now called AmeriCorps, from 1983, 85, through the George W. Bush administration, the budget increased eight times. Eight times higher than it was back in 1985. With the Obama folks in power, now it's ten times higher than what it was back then. So we have got to have an overall policy that returns power and money to the states, gives power back to the people, and undoes, it, undoes this enormous move towards the nationalization and centralization of power in big government and a few big special interests dominating the American economy. It won't work, it isn't work, and it's got to be reversed, and we can do it if we have the civic courage, the political will, and the right group of leaders willing to make the hard calls. Rhetoric is cheap. It's hard to put it into action. We've got to take the action to get our country back and to get this economy moving again. You know, the other thing that I want to mention with regard to the inflation problem, because I really worry we're setting ourselves up for an enormous inflationary spiral in the not-too-distant future as a result of the Greenspan, Bernanke, Obama, Keynesian policies, uh, loose monetary policy, and the idea of simply pumping the prime over and over again and devaluing the dollar. You know, Ronald Reagan faced some tough choices. He inherited double-digit inflation, but he stuck with Paul Volcker as he tried to bring inflation down, who was at the Fed, over the Fed at that time. And you know, we paid a price in 1982. But the thing about Ronald Reagan is he didn't make a decision based on what the polls said or what he had to do to get reelected or help people. He did what he did based on what he thought was for the good of the country. He stuck with that policy, and yes, we paid a price in 1982, but guess what? Inflation got down, and it's been down since. Unfortunately, I think it's about to come back. But again, an example of standing for your principles, it shows what makes a difference in the long haul and, and, and what a huge difference that makes, a sound dollar policy combined with growing the private sector and reducing domestic spending all help to fuel a decade of economic growth in our society. But I want to say one thing that's sort of a, uh, and there are a lot of personal stories that Norm and I and Terry and others who, who knew Ronald Reagan had. And this is a story, quite frankly, I wasn't aware about until later. But you know, Ronald Reagan was shot in late spring, in fact, it was the end of uh, this month in, uh, in 1981. I was still on the White House staff at the time, and for a while we didn't know if Ronald Reagan, President Reagan, was going to live or die. But later I, uh, I heard the, uh, what he had said uh, later, and I'll see if I have the quote because I want to get it, uh, I want to get it right. Um, because it, to me, is, um, is such a reflection of, uh, of the man I knew. These were the words of Ronald Reagan shortly after the shooting. Quote, I have decided that whatever time I have left is for him. Whatever happens now, I owe my life to God and will try to serve him every way I can, unquote. That was a man who understood that this is a nation whose principles come from our almighty creator. And who truly was a man, he didn't wear his religion on his sleeve, but he was a man who had a deep faith in God and understood what was at stake if we're going to return America to the good society that historically it has been. 